Okay, let's get into the magnetism in electricity and magnetism. So electric and magnetic fields um, are both inherently linked together. Both electric and magnetic fields are caused by charges or by moving charges. Um, but they are separate fields. There is a difference between an electric and a magnetic field, but they are also inherently linked that they both coexist at the same time. Um, why are we interested in magnetic fields? Um, well, the whole basis of electric motors, solenoids, which are basically coils that are used as switches that are used in speakers, um, all rely on the concept of magnetic fields. Um, as I just said, uh, speakers, headphones, all of that sort of thing. And we're going to learn in this topic how a speaker works. Um, we might have a go in the lab at sort of making a basic speaker as well to help you understand that. Um, magnetic fields, not that we're going to focus on it here that much, are also very important in the world of data storage. Um, becoming a little less important than they used to be with optical storage like CDs and DVDs and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, most hard disk drive, or a lot of hard disk drives um, before the sort of solid state USB drives um, were all magnetic tape storage. Um, I think the whole teenage world at least is at the moment is watching 13 Reasons and um, cassettes, which are obviously at the centre of that Netflix series, are also very much a data, um, a magnetic field, a application of magnetic fields in terms of data storage. Not that I'm encouraging you to watch 13 Reasons. Okay, let's get into it. So there's a lot on this slide, but I think you'll find that there's nothing here that is too difficult. Um, so I'm just going to change colours for a change. I'm going to use a green arrow instead of a laser pointer. Um, firstly, what do we need to be able to do? So our intended student learning here, sketch the magnetic field lines produced by an electric carrying current flowing in a straight conductor, a loop, and a solenoid. So a solenoid is basically just a coil. Um, just a little bit of background before we get into how that happens, and not that it's that difficult. Moving electric charges, and hence electric currents, produce magnetic fields. So I think I just mentioned that before. The magnetic field is in addition to the electric field produced by the charges. I think we also mentioned that. You both have an electric and a magnetic field. A magnetic field can be represented by field lines such that the direction of the field is at a tangent to each line and the magnitude of the field at any point is represented by the number of lines crossing a unit area perpendicular to the field in the vicinity of the point. So this is like electric fields. So we've got some magnetic fields down here that we're going to talk about in a sec. Um, the line points to the direction of the field. The closer the lines are together, the stronger the field etc etc now the direction of the magnetic field is defined as the direction in which the north pole of a small compass needle points so I might uh, do a little diagram here um, if we think of our sort of typical bar magnet that we had in the lab would have a north pole and a south pole and if we got a little compass, the needle of that compass would point towards the south pole. If it was there, if it was up here, the north poles would be repelled, so the north pole would point that way. And a bit like with the electric fields, if we put it down here, um, it would be being pulled towards the South Pole, like, if you like, like such, repelled by the North Pole like that. So we would get the magnetic field in that direction there on the outside of the compass. You may have done this experiment looking at the fields. It's a very neat way to see the fields. Are using iron filings with a bit of paper under a magnet and all the iron filings will line up in the direction of the magnetic field and you get that sort of pattern that you can see with some of these diagrams below. So, 
let's get into what we need to be able to do. So we need to be able to sketch the magnetic field produced by a straight conductor, so a wire, a loop, and a solenoid. And we do this using the right hand curl rule. The direction of the magnetic field in a straight conductor, a loop, or a solenoid can be determined using the right hand curl rule, which is what I said. With the thumb pointing in the direction of conventional current, and this is a bit confusing. Conventional current is defined as the direction positive charge would flow through a circuit. So it'll, positive will be going away from the positive towards the negative. Now, we know that electricity is normally a flow of electrons, which is negatively charged. So if you like, the electrons are flowing in the opposite direction. But this stuff on magnetism was sort of, if you like, discovered and proposed before they knew about the electron. And they basically just said, well, we're going to define it as positive charge. And we've just always stuck with that. So rather than making it a left-hand rule for electron current, which is what is more common, we stick with the right can curl. But we say conventional current. So just remember that's the direction positive charge would flow, which is from positive to negative. Now, if you point your thumb in the direction of the current, the curl of the fingers shows the direction of the magnetic field. So you can see these lines here in blue show the direction of the magnetic field. So in this case, it would be anti-clockwise. We then apply that to a loop. So if we look at a loop of wire here, current's going this way, so the thumb shows the current. The curl would show that inside that loop, the magnetic field would be pointing up. Uh, magnetic field is given the symbol B, so hence why we use B. So B is the symbol for magnetic field strength. Um, and so on. So basically this situation here creates a diagram like this. Inside that loop, the magnetic field is always pointing up. And then as you get around to the sides, that would start to curl back down. Now... A solenoid is basically just a combination of loops. Loop, 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 loop. Um, now, just showing you, we can represent a solenoid like this as we have. Sometimes that's a bit confusing. So this notation here on the um, this side, you'll often see this. This is to signify, if you like, at the top, a circle with a dot is like an arrowhead. So that's where the current is coming out of the page. And on this side, we have a circle with a cross. That's like the tail of an arrow, so it's going down into the page. So these two diagrams here and here basically represent the same situation. However, this is with it drawn as a loop. Um, this is showing, you can see here, the current at the bottom is going in and then it loops back, comes out at the top, goes in at the bottom, out at the top. And you can see, using the same principle as the loop, that that's the direction of the magnetic field that is created if you follow your thumb. So sometimes if you think about this one, if you point your thumb into the page of your right hand, you'll see that... Oh, sorry, at the top it's out of the page. So head of the arrow is out of the page tail of the arrows into the page. I'm not sure if I said that right just before. I'm just worried now. But when I listen back, I guess I'll know. But definitely into the page, tail of the arrow out of the page. So if you point your thumb out of the page, you'll see at the top, the magnetic field is going to be going that way. And on the inside, the magnetic field is going to be going that way. And you can do the same thing at the bottom. So that's how we use the right-hand curl rule to work out the direction of the magnetic field. Next, we're going to talk about the force, or the magnetic force, a current-carrying conductor, or a current-carrying wire, experiences when it is placed in a magnetic field. So in the last slide, we saw how we can create a magnetic field. If we then place a magnet, or if we place another wire, which creates its own magnetic field, into that first magnetic field, we'll have the interaction of the two fields. 
and that will cause a force to be exerted. So we're going to talk about how we use the right hand rule to work out the direction of the force. Um, and then we're going to talk about the formula that is used to work out um, the magnetic field strength and hence the amount of force that is produced. So, when placed in a magnetic field, a current carrying conductor experiences a force due to the movement of charge in the conductor. So basically, the two magnetic fields interact. The magnitude B, so B is what we use for magnetic field, I think I said that before, is the force per unit current element placed at right angles to the field where a current element is the product of the current and its length. So, in the same way that the electric field strength is equal to the force per unit charge, or the acceleration, which is the gravitational field strength, is equal to the force per unit mass, the magnetic field is defined as the force per this sort of weird thing, unit current element, which is basically the current times by the length. Um, I don't think... I'm going to... I think it's really important to see that similarity with electric field strength with acceleration, which is a measure of gravitational field strength. But... I'm not going to try and go into the rationale behind the per unit current element. Um, I, I, I think hopefully you can just follow that pattern and see that there. The direction of the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane defined by I delta L, i.e. the current, and the magnetic field. That's a little bit confusing. This makes it, helps it make more sense and is given by the right hand rule or I often call it the right hand palm rule where the um, direction is that of conventional current as I know I've talked about conventional current before. Um, so what does that say? That says that if you point your thumb in the direction of conventional current your fingers point out in the direction of the magnetic field. So pretend you're sort of holding your hand like you're going to pretend it's a dog or something like that on a shadow. So with your fingers outstretched and your thumb straight out. The direction of the force comes out of the palm of your right hand. So current, in conventional current that is, in the thumb... Magnetic field strength is the fingers. The direction of the force will be out of the palm of the hand. Now, a couple of things. If the current is flowing in the same direction as the magnetic field, so instead of the current being perpendicular up, if the current is in the same direction, their force is zero. So the force of on a current element that is parallel to a magnetic field is zero. And finally, how do we work out the strength of that field? Well, we use the formula... For, well, how do we work out the strength of the force due to that field? We use the formula force equals I times delta L times B, so the current times by the length of... times by the magnetic field strength times by sine theta. So if theta is 90, sine theta is 1... That's where it's at its maximum. If it's parallel, theta is zero, sine theta is zero, therefore the force is zero. So that's consistent with that previous statement that I've just made there. So we'll go and look now, and it'll probably be into the next video, of an example of how you solve problems with this formula.